people welcome to another episode of happy af my name is sam bowker and i'm so excited that you have decided to join me here today well my beautifuls i have got to tell you i am super super excited about this next season of happy af so i just want to give you a little bit of a lowdown if you're new to checking out my show last year i started this show and the whole intention if i'm really honest was that i wanted to see if i could do it okay i don't know if you've ever wanted to start something and you've been so afraid that maybe you couldn't do it that you never even started. Well, that was kind of me for many, many years, right? I let my perfection get in the way of progress. I didn't even start unless I was really, really certain that I was going to get it right. Can you relate with that? Well, over the last few years, I have decided after doing umpteen hours, you know, thousands and thousands of hours of dollars and training and everything. I've spent a lot of time with a lot of amazing mentors and coaches. And I've realized that perfection really is not what I should be aiming for. I should be aiming for progress. And so I've really been working on that theme of progress, not perfection for, you know, probably about the last three or four years now. And I've got to tell you, my little perfection gremlin, she kicks in on a regular basis. But last year I started Happy AF and I pretty consistently for 12 months, I did my show. And truthfully, there wasn't a great deal of planning other than to be consistent with showing up each week and sharing some knowledge that was going to help people live their life happy AF. So I did that, okay, and, and I was pretty consistent and I had some highs and I had some lows and I went out and I shared and I had, you know, people tell me that it was great and I had people tell me that it was helpful and I had people like and comment and share. And so, okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. I thought, you know what, I am onto something. And more importantly, it helped me get over my perfection, uh, my perfection story about it has to be perfect. Now listen, I'm always going to be aiming for my best every single time. I'm always going to want it to be amazing. And along the way, I acknowledge and accept that there is going to be plenty of growth. There's going to be weeks where I like the audio, but the visual looks bad. There's going to be weeks where the visual looks good and the audio is bad. There's going to be weeks where nothing works. There's going to be weeks where I know what I want to say and weeks where I don't. That was last year. Now, we are in season two right? Season two of Happy AF. And this year, what I really want to do now that I know I can consistently show up is, yes, I still have a lot of work to do when it comes to the tech and the lighting and the studio and all of that. And I'm going to continue to work on that. That will be a work in progress. That said, what I do want to do is I want to make this show something that really adds value and gives you short, little, sharp, you know, tips, tricks, tools that are going to help you fast track your success to living your life happy AF. Okay. Now look, you know, sound warning, this is not for children's ears unless you don't mind them hearing a few F-bombs left, right and center. I, I do my best, but truthfully, I'm a bit of a fuck this and fuck that kind of person. So if that's going to offend you, this is not the show for you. If however, you can see through my colorful language and just understand that that's who I am, Sam Bowker, I'm a bit of a swearer. You're going to get a lot of valuable content. So my intention, okay, my intention with this show is that each week what I'm going to do is I'm going to share some tips and tricks and tools and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you something to download to help you along the journey of success with whatever I've shared on that session and then I'm also, if required, if I think it's going to be helpful, I'm going to create a hypnosis or a meditation to accompany that stuff that we've just learned about. Okay, so there's going to be the show to give you a bit of a quick download, a bit of an inspo hit, some tools, some tricks. Then I'm going to give you a little PDF, a magic PDF where you can download it and you can tick things off and check boxes and you can learn a bit more. And then I'm going to give you something, an audio to listen, because I know visual, audio, kinesthetic, right? When I want to teach someone, I need to understand that some of you are super visual, right? Some of you need to see things and when you see things, you get it. Other people, they need to hear things, right? And then some people, they need to kind of do stuff. Now, some truthfully, if you do all three, if you see it and then you hear it and then you do it and you take an action, then you're actually going to lock it into your physiology and you're actually going to create these new patterns and habits and behaviors that are going to have you living your life happy AF, which is, you know, the ultimate goal. So, what does AF stand for? You can make it stand for whatever you like. For me, it is happy as fuck, right? And that just means, I mean, you know, fuck is the best language, really. You can be like, fuck you, fuck me, get fucked. 
fucking let's do this. It's it's an expletive. It's an you know it's a it's a compliment. It's a go away. It's a comeback. It's a whatever you like. For me, it's just kind of a really passionate word that can be used in so many ways. But the reason I like AF is that it's not just about that word, right? That word kind of fits with everything else that I can think of that most people on the planet want. Fun, freedom, to be fierce, to be financial, uh, financially fit, to be fabulous, fabulosity. I mean, the F word is just, it's a cracker on every level. So you make happy AF mean whatever you like it to mean. But if you know me, Sam Barker, happy AF, it's happy as fuck. Cool. Now we've got that out of the way. This is season two. And if you want to go back and watch some of the old episodes, you can. You can watch my journey along the way. I like to think it's improved. Okay. And I like to think that each week I'm adding value to you guys. So if you like what it is that I'm sharing, help me here on YouTube land, right? Like, subscribe, share it with people. I believe there's a thing called an algorithm. They really like it when you do stuff like that. So please go ahead and do that. And you know, feel free to comment. I promise I will respond. I will get back to you. I love hearing your feedback. So now that you understand what's going on and now you understand where we're at, I want to share with you that if you are interested in having direct access to this, I have a Happy AF app, okay? And for the next 90 days, I'm going to be giving it to anybody who's keen for free, right? It is a free app and it's going to have all of the episodes. It's going to have hypnosis sessions and a few other cool little, you know, bonuses if you jump on in there, okay? And it's free. So like jump in, check it out. If you love it, great. If you don't, awesome. 90 days free, didn't cost you anything. Okay, moving right along. That's the Happy AF app. Just type in Happy AF app and I will hook you up. Otherwise, let's get into today's episode. Okay, so what are we going to talk about today? Well, I think it's high time I started talking about gratitude and focus, right? Gratitude and focus. And the reason I really want to share with you and speak into gratitude and focus today is that I've become really aware of the fact that I do a lot of unconscious patterns, right? We all do. In fact, you know, there some people are unaware of the fact that they are just pattern making machines. Other people like me have more awareness of the fact that we are pattern making machines because I've done a lot of trainings. But that doesn't mean that these little patterns uh, don't still cause, you know, grief sometimes. But one of the things that I know is that I can bring myself back relatively quickly. And so I want to share with you how it is that I'm able to do that. Because I really truly believe that if my mission is to help a billion people get happy, and it is, and I want to help people break free from anxiety, depression, and addiction, I want to help people break free from limitations and all of the patterns and stories that are stopping them from living their best freaking life, then I need to show you how to do that, okay? And where your focus goes, your energy will flow. So if you wake up in the morning, right, and the first thing you think to yourself is, oh, God, it's going to be a rough day today. It's going to be a rough day today. It's going to be really, oh, I've got to go to work and I've got that thing I don't like. And, oh, yeah, it's, it's going to be a tough day. If that's how you wake up in the morning, guess what's going to happen? Very first thing that's going to happen is you're going to have, I, look, I, I was listening to a podcast the other day and I want to say it was Stephen Harvey and I really love this analogy and I'd never heard it described like this but it's totally like this so I'm totally going to rip him off and I'm going to share it with you but I am crediting him okay and if I've mixed his name up I'm pretty sure it's Stephen Harvey he's a comedian and he's American and he's super cool okay if you wake up in the morning and you start thinking negative thoughts as the first thing in the morning so check yourself first are you that person do you wake up and think positive thoughts or do you wake up and think negative thoughts just assess yourself really quickly, okay? If you write positive, I want you to write it in the chat. If you write negative, write it in the chat, right? Now, if you wake up, let's start with negative. If you wake up with negative thoughts in the morning, here's what happens. Your negative thought kicks in. Oh, this job. Oh, I don't want to do this thing. Whatever your, whatever your thought is, okay? What happens is you have got a foreman inside your brain. He's Captain Negative, okay? And your little foreman inside your brain has got all of the council workers there, you know, all of the factory workers, I should say, and they're all sitting there waiting to be told what to do, right? So they're sitting there and Captain Negative wakes up and goes, quick, everybody, quick, quick, battle stations. Sam said it's going to be a bad day. She said it's going to be really terrible going to work and she's like dreading the drive and oh, quick, 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 quick. Let's deliver her the experiences because that's her expectation. Her expectation is it's going to be a bad day. We can't let her down. We can't let her down, right? Because 
I'm actually in charge of my foreman, right? And I've just told my foreman it's going to be a bad day. So off they go and they go and make that happen. Whereas if I wake up in the morning and I go, oh, woohoo, first and foremost, I woke up, it's going to be a good day, it's going to be a good day. Because I woke up, like, I don't know, side note, if you wake up, that's already a good day, people. That's already a good day because you're on the right side of the ground. And then if I go, gosh, I can't wait, you know, oh, it's a beautiful day. Oh, I've got I've got great clients that I'm seeing today. I'm really looking forward to my day. Or even if it's raining outside and you wake up and you go, oh, geez, isn't that rain beautiful? Gosh, I'm really grateful. I can smell the grass. And like you look for things to be grateful for. What happens is Captain Positivity wakes up and goes, quick, everybody, get to your stations. Sam said it's going to be a great day. She said it's going to be positive. Quick, we have to, we have to deliver off. We have to deliver that for her, right? And I'd never quite heard it described like that, but I love it because it took me back to that movie Inside Out. And if you haven't seen Inside Out, it's a super cute film. But I loved it because it took you back to this film where you've got joy and sadness and you know anger and I really see that we've got these little little critters inside of us, right, that we are commanding and getting to behave in a particular way. So where our focus goes, as I said, our energy is going to flow. And so if we are focusing on all of the negative stuff, we're not going to feel great. It's as simple as that. And what's going to happen is that once we're not, feel, once we're not feeling great, we then typically stack the not great things. So one not great thing will happen. And what we'll then do is go see, see, and then we'll find something else not good because, you know, energy loves company, yeah? So, what you are, ah, misery loves company. Oh, let's stack something else. Oh, and there's something else. And the next thing you know, you're doing this, you know, very groovy stacking dance of negativity. But conversely, what's great about that is that you can do the exact same thing but with positive stuff, okay? So... I really want you to just take a moment to think, you know, if you were to rank yourself on the negative positivity scale, right, would you say you are typically a positive person or would you say you are typically a negative person? You know, another way of looking at it is, are you typically cup half full or cup half empty? You know, I know that that's kind of an old cliche way of saying it, but the simple fact is that we all know someone who is typically just a little bit more negative. Like they walk into the room and they suck the energy out of that place. You walk out of that room and after spending an hour with them, you're like, oh, God, that took so much energy. And I wonder if you can think, like, who is someone in your life that takes the energy versus gives it? And then going back to the positive side of things, that person who is just a delight to be around, right? They walk into a room, they tend to light it up, you tend to enjoy having time with them, time flies, they're really positive, right? I can guarantee you that person, that second person, the one we all want to hang out with, that person there has some level of a gratitude practice, whether they are doing it consciously or whether it is just an unconscious pattern whereby they focus on the things they are grateful for. Okay, and it is a practice, right? Everything we are doing right now is just a habit. And our habits are either serving us to feel good or they're serving us not to, okay? And so I want you to just now start doing a bit of a evaluation on who you are right now in the world. How do you show up? How do you feel? Are you feeling like you wake up in the morning and you think, oh, this is another day. I really don't want to be here today. Or do you find yourself waking up and going, yeah, life is good. Now, I would encourage you, right, as I sit here and share this with you, if you are not finding that you are like a seven or eight on the positivity scale, if you find that you are sort of like higher on the negativity scale, if you're at like a five for negativity, we want to definitely work with that. You know, as far as I'm concerned, if you are more than like a two uh, on negativity, then you really want to kind of think about why is that? Now, if at this point you're going to turn around and go, well, it's because my job is not great and, well, you know, I've got family members that are not feeling well or, well, I've got, you know, um, uh, uh, I don't know, like fill in your blank, whatever is your version, okay? There is things that are outside of your control. There are things that you absolutely have no chance of changing. So the only thing you can change is, how you're choosing to feel about that particular situation. And when you choose how you 
feel about that situation, miraculously, that situation does tend to change. Now, I'm not saying that all of a sudden, if somebody's dying, they stop dying. But if you start focusing on the beautiful moments that you had with them, instead of the fact that they're dying, if you start focusing on, you know, how grateful you are that you are well, and that you are going to make the most out of your life because you've now been given the contrast of the ending. There is always a way to have a look at things that is going to help you feel better. Okay. Now, the reason that this, I think, is so important to share is that so many of us, me included, okay, can go through life looking at the downside of things, right? And what happens is, is that my experience of these downside moments is that typically they are just very poorly wrapped gifts. Okay, they are presents that are being given to you, things that are helping you along the journey to whatever is your ultimate vision and destination. But the thing is that they're coming wrapped in a very poorly, you know, poorly, you know, shitty wrapped packaging. And you get it and you're like, really? What the fuck is this? I don't want this. This is shit. But when you stop and you take a breath and you really reflect for a moment on what that is, you will see that actually it really is some kind of blessing in disguise, right? Or as my good friend Joe says, it's a blessing, you know, a blessing and a lesson. And I really love that, you know, because I really think that those, if you can understand that those things that are really quite difficult to handle, they are actually blessings and lessons. And if you can get the lesson that you need in that moment when it's tough, you won't have to learn that lesson again. So what kind of a gratitude practice, if any, do you have? I would like you to consider if you don't have something that you do as a uh, like a conscious practice, I would really encourage you to start considering what you could do. And if you have children, you know, I often, we're not consistent with it. I'll be truthful. I would love to be consistent with it. I've done everything from gratitude jars where we write down the things that we are grateful for and I get everyone in the family to do it and we pop it all in a jar and then when someone's not feeling great, they pull it out and they get to read a gratitude which makes them feel good. We've done gratitude at the table, you know, at the dinner table where we go around and we ask everybody to talk about things that they're grateful for. This morning, I started a gratitude practice with my daughter, you know, before she went to school because I was like, you know what? I want you to look for things to be grateful for during your school day because I don't know, all of you parents out there that have just sent your kids back to school, I know that most of us think, oh, they're going to have a good day. They're going to come home in a good mood. Just like when I get her home at night, I ask her, what were your rocks and what were your rainbows? You know, not how did you go today because often that's going to be, oh, it was like, you know, meh. But if I ask for specifics, like what was good and what was bad, for want of a better word, but I say rocks and rainbows, then she'll usually, she has to tell me one rainbow and she has to, if she's got a rock, she'll tell it to me, okay? But because I set it up this morning, I'm now hoping that she's going to start thinking about what she can look for to be grateful for. So ask yourself, have you got a gratitude practice? And if you chose to create a gratitude practice, how simple it could be, what would be the impact if you consistently did it? So if you wake up in the morning typically not feeling great, my suggestion would be that in the morning before you even put your feet on the ground, when you wake up, take three deep breaths, lay there and just think of three things that you are grateful for. And if all you can think of is the fact that you woke up, or if in fact you're not feeling grateful because you woke up, then ask yourself, is there something you could choose to be grateful for? If you've woken up in a bed, could you be choosing to be grateful for that? If you've woken up and you have food to eat, could you choose to be grateful for that? It does not have to be red sea parting things. Where is the joy? If you start practicing that, you'll notice that all of a sudden, instead of it feeling so hard, you'll notice that your brain starts looking for things or, as my good mate Stephen says, your little foreman is going to run around, your positivity foreman, and they're going to say, quick, Sam said it was going to be a good day. Sam said she was grateful to be awake. Quick, we have to give her more things to be grateful for. It's funny, you know, how the simplest things can often have the greatest impact. But I have to tell you that my gratitude practice, which, as I mentioned, you know, I'm I'm a bit rubbish in the past, I will say, with being consistent with things until I make them a priority, right? I made this show a priority, being consistent. I've started my swap outs where I've stopped things and start other things. Eh, consistency goes like this, but I always get back on the horse, right? I've started this thing called 75 Hard also. On, off, on, off, on, off. 
but I always consistently get back on the horse and I'm always committed to constant and never ending improvement. And I have got a pretty sunny disposition. Even when stuff is going completely sideways, I usually will allow myself about 24 hours to move through my nonsense and I will come out the other side and I can always see the blessings very quickly, even though they might be hard and I might be frustrated and I might get a bit about the whole thing. I very rarely will stay there for very long, even though I might be up and down and up and down and up and down. It doesn't matter because I don't surrender to the super high nor the super low, right? Which gets me feeling pretty good. You know, it's a bit like a bit of a groovy dance, really. A bit like this, okay? So if you're interested in knowing more about a gratitude practice, if you would like some tools and resources to go along with your gratitude practice, okay, then simply just message me in here and I will hook you up with some details of what you can do to start your own gratitude practice, okay? It's just a habit that you create. So I would ask you to sit back and the first step is evaluate your level of happiness right now right? Your level of positivity. Because if you're super negative, chances are you're not happy, right? And the goal is happy AF. So where are you at? Where are you at right now? Okay. Then once you've assessed yourself, what would it be like if you could move that up a couple of points? Now, unless you're a 10 out of 10, and seriously, I mean, I'm not a 10 out of 10. I always believe there's room for improvement. What would it be like if you could lift the bar? Yeah. And what would you be prepared to do to raise that? What would the knock-on benefits and the impact of being in a happy, more positive disposition, who else would that impact? How would it be for your loved ones? How would it be for, you know, the environment that you work in, your co-workers? Uh, have a look at what would the knock-on benefits be. And if you want to know more information, I literally, I'll just send you out a free download. You can jump in and you can fill out some questions for yourself and you can start your own little gratitude practice and take some accountability for staying on track with it and measure yourself, right? And then I'll put together a little hypnosis for you, a little recording that you can listen to. Again, all of this stuff is free, okay? So if you guys want it, you literally just have to message me, okay? And I'll hook you up. It's as simple as that. I'm really committed to this. So if you've got somebody in your life that you don't feel is doing positivity and doing happiness to the degree that you think it would be useful, then share this episode with them. Let them take ownership for their own happiness. Let them take some actions. And, you know, if they're that person that you find when you walk into a room and they suck all the oxygen out of the room, if they're energy vampires, then, you know, maybe share this with them. And, you know, when you're sharing it with them, maybe say to them, hey, listen, I really love you and I can see that right now you don't feel good and I've tried this thing and it's really helped me and I'd really love it to help you because I love you and I want you to be okay so you don't want it to be like hey you're a negative shit take this because you know they're not going to take that very well and trust me if people are negative they're not feeling good about it okay but they're being bombarded with so much bad stuff today the news is negative and and the media everything is negative so it's very you know you really have to work hard to keep your energy and your vibration up help me do it guys Okay, it's much easier. Compounding effect. If I do this and then you share it with one person and she shares it with someone and he shares it with someone, we're going to get there a whole lot quicker. So that's it for me today, guys. I hope this has been helpful. This is all about gratitude. It's all about where you choose to focus. And if you focus on the things you're grateful for, not only will you get more to be grateful for, but you will just find overall everything about life will start seeming brighter, shinier and a whole lot better. And then you'll get to live your life happy AF. I've told you once, I'll tell you again, if you master your mind, you get to win the game of life. Like, subscribe, share, and I will look forward to seeing you at my next episode of Happy AF. I love you guys. Take care. Bye. You just be what you want to be.